Is premarital sex a sin? Of course it is. Of course it is. There's no question about it. In fact, the only reason why uh, we have to take the time to even ask the question is because in our attempt to deny the obvious, because of the guilt that comes with it, we've gotten, well, not so bright, not so clear. This is one of those places, even in the evangelical church, where we generally stick our fingers in our ears and say to the Lord God of heaven and earth, la, 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 I can't hear you. I have no way of knowing the numbers on this, but I can tell you anecdotally that uh, I'm familiar with just many, many churches uh, that have welcomed into their membership, not just people sitting in the pews hearing the gospel preached, but people into their membership, people that they know are cohabiting, are living together, who are fornicating. That's a fancy old word, and I think that may be one of the reasons why we can uh, sort of toss this law overboard, because if we call it something old-fashioned, then we don't feel like we need to keep it. But the Word of God says differently. The Word of God says not only that this is a sin, but, he, but Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, this is speaking with respect to fornication. He says, let it not be even named among you as becomes saints. Other translations, let it not be named once among you. This is not only not supposed to be common inside the evangelical church, it's supposed to not only be, uh, well, it's supposed to not even be rare. It's supposed to be a never thing. What this tells us is how deeply we have drunk from the wisdom of this world in terms of determining our moral perspective on things. We have become profoundly worldly. What the world looks down on, we look down on. What the world approves, we approve. What God looks down on, we approve. What God approves, we look down on. Now, I'll grant you that if someone uh, in your garden variety evangelical church in some sort of uh, public meeting admits to uh, being a virgin, that they're probably not going to be uh, badly mocked. But I can also tell you that if everyone who's not a virgin and who is unmarried stands up and says, yeah, I've been doing this they're not going to be rebuked because that just doesn't seem nice. That might just drive people away. Well, friends, here's the funny thing. We're so hell bent on yelling about sins that are less likely to touch us like homosexuality that uh, we're willing to talk about those things and how terrible they are, but the ones that actually are crouching at our door, we don't speak about because that would make us uncomfortable. I want to tell you something. I, I, again, I don't know how to prove this, but my experience of ministering outside the doors of a local abortion mill has persuaded me of this truth, that even the most crass, wicked, wildly loose people know that fornication is a sin. And in fact, among the things that people seeking abortion are trying to get out from under certainly is responsibility, certainly is expense, certainly is a lack of convenience, but they're also trying to get out from under the shame of what they've been doing. Friends, the real question is not, uh, is fornication a sin? The real question is, why won't the church say so? Why do so few believers believe so? 
maybe we'll look at those questions another time. <laughs>